San Francisco firefighters respond to a report of fire in the city's Diamond Heights neighborhood around 1045 on the morning of June 2, 2011. The residents are able to flee the four-story family home. Because the home sits on the Glen Canyon hillside, reaching the structure proved somewhat complicated for firefighters. I saw the firemen outside of the front of my house gearing up and I didn't see much smoke and then a few minutes later there are just tons of black smoke billowing out. Inside, firefighters, including the members from Engine Company 26, face a scenario that every firefighter fears at a working fire. Flashover. One of the trapped firefighters activates the emergency alarm on his radio, connecting with dispatch. When the dispatcher receives no response, the commander at the scene sends a RIT team to locate and extract the distressed firefighters. Firefighter Tracy Courtney is able to get out on her own, suffering minor injuries. Lieutenant Vincent Perez and firefighter paramedic Anthony Valerio are found unconscious with severe burn injuries and signs of excessive smoke inhalation. Perez goes into cardiac arrest and is pronounced dead upon arrival at the hospital. Valerio is in critical condition. Two days later, he succumbs to his injuries. Vincent Perez, 48 years old, was a 21-year veteran of the department. He is survived by his mother, sister, and two brothers, police officers for the cities of San Francisco and Oakland. Anthony Valerio, 53, worked as a firefighter for 14 years and spent 13 years with the EMS prior to being cross-trained as a firefighter. He is survived by his parents. Thank you very much for allowing me to come before you today to discuss the uh, partial chronicle of the multiple line of duty death that occurred in San Francisco on June 2nd, 2011 at uh, 133 Berkeley Way that resulted in the uh, loss of firefighter, paramedic Anthony Valerio and Lieutenant Vincent Perez. Uh, before I begin my presentation, if I may, if I can ask the body's indulgence on several levels, the uh, event is still under active investigation by several agencies and by stipulated agreement with the administration of the uh, San Francisco Fire Department. Uh, only a very small amount of the inquiry can be shared at this juncture, and I am uh, compelled by legal issues to be very careful with what I say today. Uh, secondly, but most importantly, the event occurred barely nine weeks ago, and uh, the wounds are still quite fresh in my members' minds, and I ask for your patience with me today. And finally, there's always actions behind the scenes that go unnoticed, and today I would publicly like to acknowledge uh, and make mention of Los Angeles City Local 1112 Executive Board members Tony Gamboa and Leonard Ruvacaba, who came to San Francisco at their own expense immediately by, upon hearing about our loss and spent the entire week of the funeral at our offices helping out wherever they can. So again, my heart uh, and heartfelt thanks go out to those two members. You guys put on one hell of a funeral with tears in his eyes and in the most sincere and respectful of tones. These were the words that a brother from a neighboring California local shared with me during the funeral services for Perez and Valerio. It was these words that truly underscored what I already knew, that in the fire service we have been, become too good at ceremony when we lay our fallen comrades to rest because we do it too often. Vince Perez was a uh, San Francisco native born and raised in the Bernal Heights uh, district of the city. He served his country as a United States Marine and came home to serve his community, initially as a deputy sheriff for Alameda County, and then 21 years as a San Francisco firefighter. He was 48 years of age at the time of his passing. Tony Valerio, uh, he was originally born in New Jersey, but came, came to San Francisco at an early age. He was a paramedic for the San Francisco Department of Public Health for 13 years and became a firefighter and served for us for 14 years. At the time of his passing, he was 53 years of age and just six weeks short of retirement. Uh, this photo shows a uh, picture of Station 26 in San Francisco. And, mo and like most of our 40 stations, it's uh, situated uh, to provide the most effective coverage based upon geography and population. And Station 26 is located in the Diamond Heights area of San Francisco in the Borders Glen Park Canyon, which is a very hilly area. 
This next photo shows, again, Station 26, the day of the funeral services and the support received from our uh, affiliates out of Los Angeles County. And if I may take a moment to set the stage for the events that occurred that day, uh, in San Francisco, a full first alarm assignment of, uh, consists of three engine companies, two truck companies, one rescue squad and one manning unit, and they are always, always dispatched when there's a report of smoke or fire. We additionally send one uh, division chief, two battalion chiefs, and uh, as the staffing, our engines are always staffed with one engine officer and three firefighters. Trucks are staffed with one officer, four firefighters. Our rescue squads are staffed with one officer and uh, three firefighters. As the division chiefs are staffed with, of course, a chief officer and uh, what we uh, call an incident scene specialist or the chief's driver. And their responsibility is to augment the chief on administrative duties and, of course, when incident command is put into effect to help uh, monitor that. Uh, staffing uh, compliance occurs at 0, 0800 hours daily and again at 2,000 hours per the MOU between the uh, local 798 and the city and county of San Francisco. And uh, just to, uh, I know it's on the bullet points, but let's go over our full first alarm assignment that day so you have a feel for who was there on the uh, first full alarm box that was struck at 1045 at Berkeley Way was engine 26, first due, engine 11, engine 24, truck 11, Truck 15, Battalion 6, Battalion 9, Battalion 10, Rescue 1, and Medic Unit 74. Uh, within moments, Battalion 10 was recalled as uh, Division 3 was cleared from their earlier dispatch and uh, responded to the uh, in incident at Berkeley Way. And it's important to note that Engine 26 and Engine 24 were each short one firefighter due to two administrative issues that day. Uh, this photo shows a view of the fire building's rear taken from the opposite side of Glen Park Canyon at the early stage of the fire. And as I go through the photos, I like to uh, remind everybody that we're looking from the rear of the building. So the exposures will be just opposite of what you would be if you were in front of the fire building. And I like you to note that uh, only light white smoke is visible above the roof. And no smoke or fire appears to be emanating from any of the doors at this point. It's just starting to be a little bit. Uh, access to the lowest levels is through an exterior door. There's no direct access from interior of the building. And you'll note that the uh, rear yard is very steep and surrounded by a fence, which makes it lead very difficult if you were to approach from the rear and up the hill. A uh, little interesting in San Francisco, most of our buildings are attached, but uh, this is unique. It has a, uh, on the Bravo exposure, there is a, uh, it's detached, but on the Delta exposure, you can see that it's a, uh, attached to the adjoining building. Engine 26 arrived at 1048, uh, reported light smoke coming from the garage area, and of course, not too much for concern just of yet, but within one minute, Lieutenant Perez declared the uh, situation a working fire, and it was below grade. Uh, this photo is showing flames erupting from the lower floors and communicating to the upper floors, and there's a heavy volume of black smoke visible emanating from the front of the building. And it was particularly important because if you were at the front of the building, just obscuring, uh, obscuring the command's uh, view of the fire building. And with the declaration of uh, working fire, the rules changed just a little bit. Uh, engine 32 was dispatched as the RIC. We call that RIC in, in San Francisco, which stands for Rapid Intervention Crew. Uh, most jurisdictions call it RIT. Uh, and their sole responsibility is to uh, rescue a downed or trapped firefighter. Uh, Rescue Captain 3 is dispatched to uh, take control of the medical group. And uh, within a few moments at 10.51, Battalion 6 arrives on scene, assumes command, and puts uh, ICS into full operation. At that point, Lieutenant Perez updates Battalion 6. We're still looking for it, zero visibility. Uh, this photo is showing flames erupting from the lower levels, and again, going up to the upper floors. Uh, Battalion 9 arrives on scene at 10.53 and is assigned by Battalion 6 fire attack. And uh, as fire attack battalion nine uh, hooks up with uh, Lieutenant Perez, discusses it with a face-to-face -face what's going on, and Perez communicates to him that it appears that the fire is below grade. Battalion nine then exits the building, trying to find the seat of the fire. At 10:56, Division three arrives on scene, has a face-to-face -face with battalion six, and Division three at that point announces uh, that they are assuming command of the fire. And listed you'll see is the assignments. 
given by Division III and Battalion Six prior to that. Uh, one thing to note that Engine 32, which was originally signed as RIC, was redeployed to uh, back up uh, Engine 11 that was making a secondary lead on the Bravo side of the fire. Engine 20 was then additionally dispatched as the uh, new RIC unit. Well, here you see that the uh, fire is rocking and rolling. It fully engulfed the rear of the building and heavy smoke is drifting uh, a little bit lazy, uh, which is kind of unusual for that district in San Francisco because the winds uh, are usually 20 to 40 miles per hour and it's uh, the one break that the crew was on scene got that day. And also the most important factor is that the uh, fire is below grade. Here again we see the uh, fire building. The intensity has uh, increased dramatically as has the smoke. And just the construction uh, of the building, like most uh, residences in San Francisco, the Type 5 wood constructions. This one specifically a four-story detached on one side, attached on the other with two stories below grade. The photo here shows the fire is somewhat contained but not fully extinguished and uh, at this point if you look closely you see uh, firefighters on the uh, B Bravo exposure building attempting a bridge and a couple fires going up the rear staircase with a uh, lead on the uh, fire building itself and a few moments later Battalion 9 reports that they have the fire knocked down. A moment or two later uh, the, the uh, transmission is given that the fire is fully contained you can tell by the uh, white steam coming from the building that they've got it pretty well knocked and the uh, emergency alarm activation occurred at that moment. 1108 Division number 3 reported on the TAC channel, the very last thing any firefighter on the fire ground would like to hear. We have a RIC operation in progress. It did not come over the radios. It was communicated to Division 3 by uh, a member of Engine 24 exiting the fire building and verbally telling the chief face to face, we have firefighters down. And a few moments later, Lieutenant Perez and uh, firefighter medic Blair are brought out. As our medical group was in uh, activation at ICS, they were receiving immediate care from uh, the medics on scene and then immediately transported to San Francisco General Hospital, Code 3 in critical condition. Uh, Lieutenant Perez died that day and uh, firefighter paramedic Valerio died two days later on June 4th. As I indicated earlier, we have several agencies investigating the fire. Uh, Cal OSHA, which is the government arm in California that investigates all work-related injuries and or deaths. NIOSH, as we all know, which had a very strong presence here at the symposium. Uh, San Francisco Police Department, uh, anytime there's a death in San Francisco, they initiate an inquiry. And the City and County of San Francisco Arson Task Force, which is comprised of uh, fire department investigators, police department inspectors, uh, deputy district attorney and a dedicated special agent from the Federal Bureau, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. And in San Francisco, we use the medical examiner system uh, who has the final authority to determine the uh, cause of death. And of course, the timeline for these reports has not been completed. And from the uh, preliminary report from the uh, fire department, we have several recommendations which I'd like to share with you. Uh, uh, the clarification of term, term, terminology of hose lines uh, in San Francisco, as I'm sure with most departments, they use several hose lines. And it's an important information to share with command what type of uh, hose line you're using so resources can be properly allocated. And of course, it filters down to water supply and pump pressures. Uh, secondly, ensure that all PPE is properly marked with member's ID. And this goes into the very sad a reconstruction of the fire scene when the artifacts and the evidence have to be collected and we need to know who was where and why. Thirdly, the incident scene specialist or the chief's driver. Uh, with any department, you, when you move up in rank, you get you, it's tough to lose that aggressive attitude you had as, as a firefighter and sometimes our uh, specialists get a little bit distracted. They like to fight the fire and so they get a little bit uh, taken away from their duties uh, in administrative capacity. Uh, third, ensure that, for me, fourth, ensure that all I see in company officers have a good situational awareness of the incident, which is self-explanatory. Uh, next, company officers are overseeing their companies. And again, uh, when you promote up, it's tough when you go from a firefighter to a supervisor not to be at the nozzle. You want to be at the nozzle, but the supervisors belong behind the crew and uh, supervising their activities. 
Uh, ensure that all companies have their equipment properly marked. Again, go into reconstructing the fire scene. And ensure that all members wear their department issued PPEs and not going out and buying their own. And of course, the investigation continues, the sequence of events. We need to know what happened and when did it happen. Incident scene diagrams so we could have an actual uh, proper full scale of the uh, fire ground and the fire building. Review of transcripts. You want to have an opportunity to talk to everybody that was at the fire, including uh, civilians. Radio and catalogs and any photograph or video that might occur, whether it's from the private sector or the uh, public sector. And uh, once the investigation is concluded, we will be uh, preparing recommendations as an operational procedure. Uh, did our policies and protocols in place, did they work properly? If not, what needs to be done to ensure the safety of our members? PPEs, did they perform as they were told, we were told they were gonna perform? And if not, why not? And do we need to upgrade? And radios, always an issue on the fire ground. Uh, did they perform properly? And if they didn't, we'll have to take a look at why they not. And the arson investigative team is still looking as to the origin and cause of the fire. As my presentation comes to an end, I uh, do want to take a few moments to uh, thank several entities for the kindness during this ordeal. Uh, from the San Francisco Fire Department, our Chief Joanne Hayes-White, Deputy Chief Tom Saragusa, Deputy Chief of Administration Monica Fields and uh, Assistant Deputy Chief Frank Carnali, who was the officer in charge of the initial investigation. Uh, they allowed us to have access to the preliminary investigation reports and photos. And uh, also the safety investigation team, which I like uh, the members to note that we have two of our executive board members on it, uh, Sean Buford and Dan Gross here, which is a vital tool when the investigation initiates. And i also like to take this opportunity to uh, thank General President Harold Schaeberger, who I knew was out there somewhere, and General Secretary Tom Miller and the balance of the IAFF, IAFF Executive Board. They responded immediately to our needs, and it was an overwhelming uh, gratification we received from uh, the International. And uh, i also like to take an opportunity to give special thanks to Rich Duffy from the IAFF staff. He uh, couldn't get on a plane quick enough, and uh, surprisingly, the only words ever out of his mouth during the whole time was, what can we do to help you? So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your attention today, and uh, may God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.